If you are new to Epidemic Sound or Ecamm Live or both of them, then stick around because I'm going to show you how these two can work together in this video. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec. And in this video, I'm going to show you basically how you integrate uh, Epidemic Sound with Ecamm Live, or rather the process you go through for getting music from Epidemic Sound into Ecamm and the various options you have once you've actually got it in there. Uh, I suppose, first of all, I should back up a little bit and say exactly what is Epidemic Sound. Well, if you are going to be creating content for YouTube or Facebook or wherever you're going to be posting it, then you do have to make sure that any music you are uh, using, you do hold a license to so that you don't get into any trouble for copyright breaches. Well, that is where Epidemic Sound comes in. Epidemic Sound is a source for a huge quantity of uh, music and sound effects, and you can pay one single monthly fee for uh, access to the entire catalog, and uh, you can get access to it and a free trial from it, or for it rather, by going to takeonetech.io slash epidemic. And once you're in there, you'll be able to browse all of the, uh, the music that is available uh, and incorporate it into your productions. They've got a few different uh, sort of membership levels so go in have a look and see which ones you think personally I'm on the lowest level and it's around about a uh $144 for a year at the time that I purchased my license. So that's around about $12 a month. And it just gives you peace of mind that you're not going to get into any trouble with uh, uh, YouTube or anyone else and having uh, copyright strikes against your content. So it's a great way to uh, just add a little bit of interest to your videos. So with that bit said, <laughs> let's go in and actually talk about the process for getting the music from Epidemic into Ecamm Live and then what you can do with it once it's there. So if I come over to my uh, screen sharing and I'm actually in my Epidemic account now and the first thing it's going to actually tell you is um, you're going to have to link these this to your accounts and the way that it works is you can basically whitelist uh, one uh, particular account from each of the social platforms. So if I come over to my uh, account here and then I'll look at my um, uh, account. <laughs> One second, and you'll see that it's got, uh, there we go, that is the active billing, uh, $144 a year. The price does change sometimes. I think that might have been on a special offer in June. I might be wrong about that. Or you can pay uh, monthly as well. Uh, and then you go on to the profile. Uh, that's my profile, I beg your pardon. That isn't what I want to do. <laughs> I want to come down. I'm still on the uh, subscriptions page. I've got this a bit zoomed in. I didn't notice it there at the bottom. This is where you specify your channels. So uh, you can actually specify one for YouTube, one for Facebook, one for Instagram, one for an RSS feed, uh, so like a blog, um, and then one for uh, Twitch as well. So you simply go into each of these and if there's one hasn't been selected that yet, then you just click in there and add in the details. So you'd add in your channels, for example, and that is how you would uh, add it uh, so to be to the whitelist. So it is important to remember that it can only be used for one channel on each of those platforms. Uh, if you want to use it on multiple different platforms or multiple different uh, channels, rather, <laughs> if you've got more than one YouTube channel, you would need a license for each one. But there are different licenses available where you can actually do that. So, so that is how you uh, link it basically to the uh, the YouTube channels that, or Facebook pages that you're going to be posting to or Instagram or whatever. And then up at the top here, we've now got either music or sound effects. So if I come onto the music section, uh, basically you can search by genre, uh, by mood, or by specific albums if you know the art artist uh, and you can also just click on the little search arrow up here but if I come into genres then you can see we've got a whole selection of different genres down here uh, they sort of highlight some at the top some featured ones but then you have also got this big long list down this side as well sound effects you've also got a range of different uh, sound effects that you can add into your productions I'm not heavy on the sound effects in my uh, <laughs> my YouTube channel but uh, I make no judgments about those who use them <laughs> uh, and if I come back into the music this is kind of like the landing page if you like when you actually log into your account and what you'll find is it will have some suggestions for your channel so it's based on whatever music that you have on your channel but then it's also got more of what you like which is based on basically anything that you've browsed and played from there in uh, in the past however long I don't know exactly but <laughs> recently um, and then it's also got some categories of music down below so featured categories and things like that that you can search now if you want to uh, oh and then some staff picks as well now once you want to have picked a piece of music that you uh, would like so let me show you just quickly how you play them <laughs> you just press the press the play button so if I click on play here 
there we go, <laughs> it plays. I'm not quite sure about that one myself. Let me try this one. I'm not entirely sure about that one kicking off, but anyway, we'll uh, we'll just choose one of these at random and I'll show you the process because once you've uh, found a particular uh, track that you like, uh, you can either save it uh, or you can download it. So if you click this plus button, it will add it to a list. If you want this one with the little link next to it, it will find basically similar tracks to that. Uh, or if you want to share it with somebody, you can click on that share and it will send the information so you can email that and do whatever to somebody. Uh, but let's say that we decided we want this one. I haven't even listened to it yet, but let's just say. There we go. It's that one. Sounds fine to me. <laughs> uh, so let's just click on the uh, the download button here. So once I click on that, uh, you've got an option to either download uh, all stems or download full mix. So you can actually download um, the track where you can basically use parts of the track. So that's where you would download all stems. But if you just want to add the music into your um, uh, production as is then uh, just download the full mix so that's what I normally do and then that will now as you see it says downloading uh, and it, in Safari you see it's downloaded and what that's done now is it's popped it into here we go in my downloads folder on my Mac so that is where it has gone once you've downloaded it from uh, Epidemic it's gone into the downloads folder of your Mac now, uh, for Ecamm Live, what I would recommend is that you have somewhere where you have a root folder that you basically store all of the things related to Ecamm Live in. It will make it much easier to find them later and it will also make it much easier if ever you need to uh, transfer over to a new computer or something like that where you need all of these different things. So what I've done is I've got a folder on my Mac basically uh, in my home folder so it's called Ecamm Live Assets uh, and then within the Assets folder we've basically got all the different things that are related to Ecamm Live uh, that I might want to use. So I've got a folder for audio, I've got a folder for green screen backgrounds, a folder for images, uh, a folder for overlays and a folder for videos. So that is just the way that I've organized it. You can obviously organize this how you want but at least then I know if I want to find a video that I'm using in Ecamm Live uh, I'll always know where it is and also I'll always know where to go looking for it within Ecamm Live if I want to find it again. So uh, what I would do personally is I would take this folder, uh, this uh, file rather, uh, and I would just drag this over into my uh, audio. So I'm going to drag this over into my audio and then it is somewhere in here. So now we've dragged it in and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how we would go into uh, Ecamm Live to actually add this in. Now there is a, a quick way to do this. Uh, let me just find it one second. I'll, I'll tell you a little, let you into a little secret. <laughs> Normally I have uh, an automation that does all this for me and it actually renames the files. But uh, I mentioned that on a uh, previous video all about Hazel. So I'll leave a link to that up in the top corner for anybody who might be uh, interested. Uh, and then what I'm going to show you now is how we're going to basically add this in to, uh, to Ecamm Live. Okay, so now I'm in uh, demo mode in Ecamm Live and uh, I just had to find the file. I pressed pause for a moment there. Well, I found it. <laughs> it's there. This is the file that we've just downloaded from uh, the... Uh, uh, it copied into this folder from downloads from Epidemic. And what we're going to do now is we're going to actually add this into our uh, Ecamm Live. Now, you can actually just drag it. First of all, we need to have the sound effects uh, panel open on Ecamm, li e Ecamm Live. So if you're not sure where that is, it's basically just up in the uh, top corner here. So you've got uh, this one is for overlays. Then you've got this one for audio levels. Uh, and then you've got this one here with the little uh, uh, note symbol uh, and the list then this one is for the uh, sound levels panel uh, sorry for the uh, <laughs> the sound effects so that is basically this panel over here so if I toggle that one on and off you can see that this one appears and disappears and that is basically where we store all of our sound effects and as I mentioned this one up at the top is where we toggle on and off our sound levels so you can see as I'm speaking my microphone is playing and then we've also got sound levels for mo uh, movie sound effects and system audio and interview levels so these are where we set the audio levels for those particular things but we're looking at specifically at this sound effects panel by the way, if you want another way to uh, actually activate this, you can also get to it from the window menu at the top and then you'll come down here and you can see at the bottom we've got sound effects and sound levels. So those are those two that we've just uh, looked at. If you want the keyboard shortcut while we're here, you can always get that from over here. So you can see these are the keyboard shortcuts for those two panels. But these are the panels that we are interested in. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this file that we've got here uh, and I can either just drag it straight into the panel like this and just drop it in uh, or what you can also do 
is if you uh, come over to the uh, plus symbol over here, you can click on the plus and then you can add a, a particular file as you want. So if I come over to my Ecamm Live assets into my audio and then it was this one. So that is how you can actually navigate to it. And what you can see is that has now added the track in here. Now you can play it from within the panel. So if you have the sound effects panel open, you can just click on play and you can see it will start playing. Down here, you've got the sound effects and you can put the volume up or put the volume down and control that. You can also group sound effects as well. So if you want to create a folder with all of your background music, you could add a little plus here and type background music or whatever you wanted to call it, and then simply drag this into this folder. And now that is in the background music folder. You've also got a couple of other things here. So you could add a hotkey if you wanted to be able to start this music at will by pressing a hotkey, you could create a hotkey for it there. So let me just press uh, something, make sure I've got that many hotkeys. It's not always obvious that I'm not gonna get one that I've already used before. I'll just use that for now. So now if I use this hotkey, there we go, the music just fades out and when I want to start it again, I press my hotkey and it starts playing again. And you can see that we have got the uh, hotkey has been uh, denoted next to it. So you can always see what you've uh, set as the hotkey. As a default, it's just gonna play through and then stop, but you can also click on here and you can have it to uh, set it to loop as well. So if you set it on there, then you'll see that it does loop. You can also set the volume of individual tracks uh, separately. So you might want to have your uh, overall uh, sound effects set to one thing for the general sound effects, but then any music that's playing, you might want that playing lower in the background and not want that to be affected by changing the overall sound effects, if you see what I mean. So that is how you can change that. Now, another thing that you may want to do with your music is you may want it to play only in a specific scene. So you can see down the uh, left-hand side here, I've got my main scene, I've got a sh screen sharing, I've actually got a copy of a screen sharing scene there, uh, and some various different scenes. So if I just come down to this scene now, so here is that scene that you've just seen with me sharing my screen, and then I've got this one. So I'm flicking between these scenes. Well, you may want it to be that your music only plays at a certain time. So what you can do is, if you've got a particular scene, like my uh, screen sharing, perhaps I only want this music to play in that particular scene. Well, what I can do is I can just drag this, this uh, audio clip and drag it into the scene, and you'll see that the little plus symbol appears next to it. And if I just drop it in there, the music starts playing and also you'll notice that it does appear up in this top corner of the uh, the preview window. So now if I go back to my main scene, there's no music playing, but when I go back to the screen sharing, then the music will start playing again. If you want to remove the piece of music from any scene, then you just simply go over to where the uh, music title is in the scene and just uh, delete it like that. Now, another thing that you can do is if you do have uh, multiple pieces of music, so in here I've got a few different pieces of background music that I use actually for some of my TikTok videos, like this. Uh, what you can actually do is you can, as well as having it so that the uh, music loops uh, on an individual basis, if you've got those grouped together in a folder, uh, you can also have it so that the whole folder group uh, loops. So you could uh, press play on this particular folder and then it will basically uh, loop through all of these tracks and then if I set it to that it will just loop through all of them and then come back to the beginning again. So that is a few of the ways that you can use uh, music in your videos and specifically from Epidemic and don't forget if you want to get a free trial head over to takeonetech.io slash epidemic uh, and there you will be able to uh, get yourself a free trial uh, and uh, try it out for yourself but it really is the easiest way I think to get some uh, good quality music. I'm not saying that what I'm using is good quality. <laughs>
but it's better than I'd be able to find anywhere else. It's all down to personal taste, really. But they have got a huge variety there, uh, and so I can highly recommend you give it a go. I hope that that has uh, sort of answered a few questions about how you may be able to use this. And by the way, I should say, once you've got the tracks downloaded, uh, you can obviously then use them in anything that you're doing on any of those platforms where you have whitelisted it. So for example, in your blog, on your Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, <laughs> and also in, uh, in YouTube as well, of course. So you can use them in your live streams. If you're going to do video editing, you can obviously use the clips in there as well. So that is really a summary of uh, Epidemic Sound and specifically using it with Ecamm Live. I hope you found that useful. If you have found it useful, then don't forget to go and uh, like and subscribe uh, and share this with anyone else who you think might need to up their audio game on their <laughs> YouTube channels. And uh, for now, I will leave it there. But there's, don't go anywhere because there is plenty more videos coming up next. I'll leave a link to my Ecamm Live playlist over on the bottom right. Have a great day.